Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 1126. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about consumer sentiment dropped last month and why that's important. Consumer sentiment is one of those things that's a really good indicator of what the consumer really feels and is really planning to do looking forward. It's one of those things that's important because 60% and some people say as much as 70% of the economy is really dependent on how much money the consumer spends. So it's really all about the consumer feeling confident or not confident about how much money they're going to spend. Are they going to make larger purchases? Are they going to purchase those big ticket items? Are they going on vacation this year? Is this the year to buy a new car, etc.? So it really tells us a lot about what's in the consumer's mind, and that can tell us how they're feeling about spending down the road, which can be the strongest indicator of all with the economy. And that's why it's important. We all know this has been a difficult year with interest rates rising and the potential of a recession. Businesses have slowed down. Fully 80% of people now believe we're going to have a recession in 2023. Whether we do or not remains to be seen, but that is the mood of the country. Now, what the University of Michigan Survey of Consumers said is it gave us a 54.7 reading for November, which was down 8.7% from October's reading of 59.9. The Dow Jones estimate was forecast for the number to be around 59.5. So at 54.7, it was quite a bit below what was expected. The market doesn't like surprises, so of course that wasn't seen as good news. There's also an index of consumer expectations, which looks to the future as to where people think things are going to head in the next six months. And that was down 6.2%. Now, when we look at inflation, the consumer price index rose 0.4% in October, which was below what was expected, which was 0.6%. So that was very welcome news that inflation was in fact trending lower than it has been and lower than what was expected. That kind of news is what sparks rallies in the market and the market took off on that very good news. And of course, part of that is that people are anticipating that if inflation isn't as bad as it has been, perhaps the Federal Reserve could ease the pace of their interest rate hikes in the future. When we look at spending for big ticket items such as televisions, or motor vehicles or kitchen appliances, the index fell 21% as consumers said they were wary of rising borrowing rates and higher prices. That continued a trend that's been happening since mid-2021. Jim Baird, chief investment officer at Plant Moran Financial Advisors, said better news on October inflation didn't come in time to provide a boost to sentiment, which declined unexpectedly. The economy may not be in a recession, but for households struggling under the weight of higher prices, it certainly feels like that for many. And that's really where we are right now. It really feels like we're in a recession. And it's strange that some of the numbers aren't supporting that because definitely many people feel things have slowed down. And I'm hearing from a lot of business owners and others who are saying definitely business seems to be slower to them. So next week, the Fed is expected to raise interest rates by 0.5% instead of the 0.75% that they have for the last four months. And that's welcome news. And it may be the start of a trend of smaller increases or maybe even taking a break or a pause with increases. That would be welcome news 
if the Fed would just take some time and wait to see if these interest rate increases have already done a lot of the work for them. Of course, raising interest rates always slows the economy, slows things down. It causes contraction in the economy. And we've seen that in the housing market. We've seen it with all kinds of financed purchases. And we're seeing people be in a cash crunch and higher levels of credit card debt. Paul Ashworth, chief North American economist at Capital Economics, said consumers managed to hold their heads above water earlier this year when gasoline prices were peaking at well above $5 per gallon. But it will be harder for them to shrug off high interest rates given that the household savings rate is already at an unusually low level. So one good thing about the sentiment index is the low is behind us. That happened back in June, and we've seen improvement in the GDP or gross domestic product as it rose 2.6% annualized for the third quarter, which is helping to overcome some anxiety about the contraction in GDP for the first two quarters of the year. As far as where inflation's going, the one-year inflation outlook is about 5.1%, and that's the highest level since July. We've been ranging in 2022 between 3.1% inflation and 4.9% inflation, and now it's anticipated it's more around 5.1%. And as I've been reporting, Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has confirmed that smaller interest rate hike increases are likely ahead as he's seen progress in the fight against inflation and see that as working. We'll hear more from the Fed next week at their meeting, and hopefully they'll tell us more about what's on their mind. But Powell said he sees the central bank in position to reduce the size of rate hikes as soon as January. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button and you'll be notified of new podcasts as soon as they're available. And all of my podcasts are available on my website at lindapjones.com forward slash podcasts. There's all kinds of podcasts about mindset, saving money, investing, wealth building, and other resources that will get you to financial freedom. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.